Hello YouTube, we're back again with a tutorial and today we're looking at build-ups and fills. This is basically just effects to put finishing touches on your tracks to really give them a nice polished vibe. It'll give it some energy and it's something which I neglect sometimes but it really needs to be done. It's actually taken from a track that I ended up releasing called Spaced Repetition. It came out on Luca Gazelle's label and it ended up being a really nice one. And I'll link the full track below so you can check it out. If you want to see more like this, you can sign up to Syntho. I think we've got over 180 hours of content now. It's like 400 videos from some of the best producers in the game. I'll put information below. Now, any questions, just get in touch. And without further ado, let's get into this video. So let's get stuck into it. To begin with, we're going to look at snare rolls. Um, it's funny snare rolls because when someone says how do you do a snare roll, I kind of assume that it's, is what it says on the tin. It is a snare that rolls. But I'm going to show you from the complete loading the sampling to completely having the snare in your track and, and the processes that I'd go through. So to begin with, I'm going to create a MIDI track and then I'm going to go over to the left and then I'm going to go to samples and then I'm going to go to... I'm going to use the SAM pack actually, the one that I've been using a lot. I'm just going to load in a snare. Any snare will do. Where are we? The kicks. They're not very nice, are they? It's got 909 snares. Typically, 909 snares used quite a lot in these kind of tracks. Let's type in snare. Actually, let's use one of these because I don't want to use a 909 in this track. Let's use that. So, one trick snare. I'm just going to move this start marker to the right so it's not so rigid and with that weird. So I'm just playing that with my push. So, snares in terms of build-ups and breakdowns, or build-ups and fills. I'm going to zoom into a drop pair. To begin with, let me give you a play of the track as well. Super happy with this track, but yeah, just needs all the build ups and stuff doing now, so I thought I might as well film it. Um, so, what I want to do here is fill this gap with a snare roll. So, I'm going to highlight the zone, I want to do the snare, right click, insert MIDI clip there. You may notice I'm on Ableton 11 as well, but it's been pretty shit. It's actually been um, dropping out a bit, so I would maybe not upgrade just yet. So, if we look at the grid here, it is one. Two, two bars, three bars, four bars in length. So if we do a snare like that, let's turn it down. Sounds like that. Do another one. Oh, let me just put an EQ on that. There's something that's clicking. Where's that coming from? find it. It's going to annoy us that. Was it that? Where the hell is that? Can't see it anywhere. Ah, it's in the low end, so apologies about that. 
Let's just delete that kick there. Must be. There we go. So the snare, first thing we need to decide is what um, frequency we want to do the snare, as in the frequency of how many times the snare is going to repeat. So if we play that from there. And then we might want to just highlight that. Duplicate it across. That's still in the low end, which is really annoying. And what we might want to do is cut this bit here at the end and then go, oops, go in this side and go. So you may be thinking, right, that seems quite straightforward, but it sounds a bit rigid and a bit boring. So what I want to do is, now is adjust the velocity slightly on each of the snare. So you see this first one? Let's bring this velocity down a bit. And then bring this one down a bit. Then bring this one, leave that one there. And then we could bring this one down a bit. Then bring this one down a bit. So watch this. And then if we highlight all these and duplicate them across like that, we've now got a bit of velocity difference with the snare roll. And this is one mistake a lot of producers make when they're first making tracks I guess or even advanced producers here do this and it's kind of like come on man it's too static with a snare roll and if you just got it dead straight um, it's just going to sound really boring so see how it's just going up and down so, for example, wouldn't it repeat loads? You can maybe go... That one down. It's almost just like every other one, I would say, just to give it some kind of realness. You could even just have no snare roll to there. You could go... Turn some of these sounds back on. So the snare comes in here. So what we could do here is click on the second one. And the next cool trick is to change the grid. So let me just show how to do that. Bottom right, right click, and you can change the grid to 32. And then just before the drop, we could make these even smaller. So it goes like this, make sure the velocities are changing on every other one like before. We can maybe just do that so it goes. So that's just a generic. But that bit at the end doesn't sound great, so we'll leave it like that. So now I want to mention the swing on snare rolls. Usually you'd probably have them off. Because let me show you what it sounds like if I put swing on. If it's a straight roll like this and there's loads of notes, if I put swing on... Kind of sounds a bit... So for the impact, I would keep swing off. So the next thing, one set my headphones are slightly loose. The next thing we want to do is apply some subtle effects to it. So the first thing I would recommend doing is trying some volume automation. So to do this, we want to put a utility on. 
So do Command F is search all, type in utility, and type, uh, click utility. The reason we do the utility for volume automation is because when it comes down to the mix down process at the end, it can be quite annoying if you've got the volume automated there. So it's better to use the utility like this. So if we right click gain, click show automation, we can zoom in and then create a subtle build by clicking the dot there and a dot there. So watch this. So yeah, you can see there how it comes from there. We could even have it from silent. And one of my favorite little tricks is if you press option on your keyboard, if you're on Mac, if you're on Windows, I can't remember what the shortcut is. Press option, you can bend the line like this. This is probably the most highly asked shortcut that I use. So you could bend the line so it kind of goes up like that like that so if I make this bigger you'll be able to see it clearer watch this see the lines curving that's really nice so volume automation is a good one the next kind of automation to subtly bring it in is an auto filter so if we do command F auto filter put an auto filter on here we can then right click on the frequency or to show automation and the same thing again. So with the filter on, you get that kind of like, whoosh, whoosh, kind of white noisy swirly effect. A bit more housey, tech housey, I'll say it quietly. So we could maybe bring the filter up even faster if we wanted. I mean, you could do them both at the same time. In my opinion, it sounds a bit tech housey, but if you're trying to make tech house, then obviously do the auto filter. Because you've got to imagine that if you're doing it in a club, sorry, an old studio and you're on a mixing desk, the chances are you'd have had the snare roll with the faders and you'd have pushed the fader up so it would have been like a like that. So you would have actually used the faders. And volume automation with this utility works across your whole track. I really think volume automation is a cool way to blend elements in and out if you're making more old school sounding stuff or yeah, just it blends things in a different way to filtering does but it's cool because it's almost like you're using a mixing desk and people back in the day used to record the tracks in a live take. So you'd have to actually turn channels up, turn channels down as you want to record the master of the track. So yeah, it's just a, a head nod to how they used to do it. So next I want to show you automation on the reverb sender returns. I've shown you this quite a few times, but I've not actually got a reverb set up on here. So I'm going to do another one in return track. And then I'm going to type in lexicon. So I'm going to load a preset here. Um, let's do Let's Dance now, see what that's like. I'm going to right click on the Send and Return, Show Automation. And we're just going to turn this up from this second bit. I'm going to go like that. See, that's really nice now. Do the bit more tail, probably. That's pretty cool. And you can see how this subtleness all just builds up. And I'm telling you this, guys, as if like I do it in every track. And to be honest, out of laziness, I probably don't, because it's almost like all oh, the track's done, but. These little final touches are the sprinkles on on the cake. And Ben Rao even talks about it. he spends like two weeks on a track and he really nails all these little bits. And it just makes your track sound really polished. It's almost just one of them. You've just got to stick the headphones on and just try everything. So let me show you another automation with a send and return. Um, I always like to use a weird delays. And this Korg SSD 
by UAD is fucking sick. You can actually pick a real one up for about 300 quid, a hardware one, but you'd obviously need a mixing desk and stuff. Um, but let me show you some of the mad presets on here. Some of the art could be cool, so it just makes it a bit more. See, that just takes the edge off the cleanness, which kind of suits this track. See, that's gone dead stereo now. Kind of makes you feel a bit dizzy. Can do crazy shit with this delay. So that's nice, that one. Cool. Sorry to interrupt, guys. This is just a reminder that if you want to take your music to the next level, you can see a lot more content just like this inside the Syntho learning area. You can also get feedback from our tutors and also connect with some like minor producers. So just head to the bio to get some more info. So that is the snare with effects. And yeah, it's like how long's a piece of string here? You could have the filter on, you could even put like a phaser on it to try and give it some. And it's all about just getting creative so another kind of snare roll i want to show you is not like a straight one it's um my duplicate this channel it's a more of like a rhythmic kind of thing so we're going to just take these effects off and then create the channel here so what you might want to do is create the midi track Sounds good, that top one, though, now. You can create, like, a bit of, like, a... I don't know what to call these. So instead of having, like, a roll, it goes... And we could put swing on these. So it's more like a... And often I'll do these. If you're using a snare in your track, you can use this in the breakdown. Let's make this loop twice this length. Could go like. But you don't necessarily have to have the groove on it. You could take the groove off. But when it's these kind of stuttery ones, let's call it a stuttered snare. Because you don't necessarily always want to have this big. It does work with this track. The phaser actually sounds good. So yeah, that's snares. And while we're on them, I'll show you how you could almost do fills as well. So my rule of thumb, I've said this before, is every 16 bars, this track isn't fully finished yet. You want some kind of fill. So if we look at this first section, After 16 bars, I've got this. Because uh, eight bars, you can get away with just having like a little element come in. And you see, we've got this vocal here. Oh, the vocal's muted. So you'll see here, I've got this vocal and this profit like acid kind of uh so we've got this sound and then this vocal 
And the word fill, it almost just fills in the end of the bar. And he's a really, I think such a game changer for your production. And obviously in this, this lesson, I'm going to give you some ideas of how you can fill the space at the end of bars. But yeah, having like a little vocal glitch or a little rezo kind of weow. And there's nothing there, no fill there, but then we've got the fill here again. And what I've got on here is just a single note. So the fill can actually kind of bridge between the couple bars before. So you see this call and response here. This is something that is making such a big difference. So this vocal, this profit rezo and this effect. And all my best tracks are when I really nail these, these sections. So this effect here, He's just done it in the profit. So if you go to the effects section, it's called black noise. Hopefully not everyone's going to go and use the same effect, but all synths have effects sections in. See that SFX? And man, they're so fucking sick. And I never see anyone tell you about this stuff. Like everyone's like, do this, do that, do the other. Um, but yeah, effects are one of the most powerful tools to turn cool loops and cool tracks into really polished products. And it's probably something I've only really, really started putting time into it. But yeah, that's like an example of how I've got three things bouncing off each other to create a fill. And what I could do there is, for example, create a MIDI track at the end, like now, and then have a snare. It's not the right sound, but it's about the, uh, the principle. That's pretty nice. That could work really well. So we could have that now uh, every eight bars. See that, that? And you'll see how once you do the fill once, you can just copy and paste it across the whole track. And it's just another element we can build up. Let's maybe leave it out there. Let's put a bit of reverb, a bit of delay. Yeah, you see how we don't need that one there either? It can just be every 16, like this. Like I said. And that's that fill. And you see how that fill bridges it to the next gap when that new synth comes in? Because without the fill, watch. But with the snap, it almost invites you in. Yeah? I hope you're nodding your head. And just while I remember, I want to come into this drum rack. And hey, you see I've called this fill? Um... This fill is a drum rack from inside Ableton, which you can all go and access, called Alert Kit. I'm, I honestly swear to God, I just loaded the kit and just chose three random sounds at the end of the bar. It goes. But like on its own, it just sounds like a random sound, but together it actually sounds like a. I'm gonna put them all on. Crazy. So I played that with the snare. We'll hit then hear some really nice invites you to the next phase of the track. I'm even going to turn the sustain down on this snare so it's a bit more. And bridges ultimately just help you transition from one part of the track to the next. So, yeah, that's snares. You're either doing snares like that to fill, let's call this the fill snare, and then let's call out the snare roll. I think it's really nice to use snares that if you've already used in the track as your snare roll, it can kind of be more in keeping. But obviously if you're going for some big tech house ripper, you might just want to put a big fat 909 snare in, but each to their own. Also, snares can almost overcompensate for an average track by using a massive snare roll and a build up. 
if this if the track's not booting off at all with no snare roll, like if I mute that snare roll, I would like to say that the track is still booting off. I know that snare roll's out at the bottom. I mean the big fat fat roller. Yeah, see the snare's kind of adding to the tension. I don't think it even needs that snare roll. But if your track's not going off without the snare roll, chances are it's probably not that good. So yeah, don't don't um, rely on snare rolls for the track to be good. So you see there, in a matter of seconds, I've just copied and pasted that snare roll across the whole of the bottom. So that's almost just like... All we can do is, when it's like a big breakdown like that, or like in a special moment, we could... You can add extra snares like then color it a different color and then we start to get that arrangement that's got details inside and it takes literally no time at all so don't necessarily think that snare works in that break i'm not 100 percent sure on it as a whole I think there, I don't even want that snare, I just want the kind of... So yeah, I mentioned velocities before, and I forgot to mention them with these. You want your velocities to be different, and it really gives it that swingy feel then. So if you see there, I've moved them, them two down. Let's colour a different colour. And then we'll copy and paste this across to all these. That needs to be there. Let's do that. And then it's just going to give it a more live feel again. See if I'll tear it. And it's just like you're playing the drums. If you're playing real drums, not everything will be the same velocity. So yeah. So that's what I've got wrote down for the snares. Next, I want to show you kick rolls, kick fills. It's the exact same thing. So what we could do is go to here, go to our kick, create a MIDI track like this, insert MIDI clip, and then we could do the same thing again. To so click a note, click Command D, and it'll duplicate like this. Because you might have heard these before in tracks. So the first things first, there is too much bass in the kick during the breakdown. So what I would do is go into the kick channel and let's put an EQ on, EQ8. Next thing we want to do is turn the frequency to 110. If we want, we can turn it higher. Right click show automation go back in this view and then now what we can do is automate the frequency to come down as the kick comes down then if we press alt option sorry we can bend the line like i showed you before and let's make sure it's in on that line we can make it bigger so you can see a bit better And that's taking so at these really big rumbly builds that you hear sometimes in clubs. Not necessarily something I do in my tracks, but again, each to their own. So what we could do here is something more stylish probably for me would be like this. Maybe take these out and go like. So it's like that. So that's pretty cool. And I'm actually gonna keep this frequency there. And then if we want this filter to turn off when it's dropped, right click, show automation, and we need to turn the EQ8 off. So we've got like that. And that means the EQ is going to turn off on the drop. And also we don't want it to turn on until the breakdown starts. So there, so you see now. That actually sounds pretty good. Then if we put the snare roll on. Baby. 
And we can just play around with the notes. Maybe it needs to go. So that's a nice one. And again, right click, automate reverb if we want. That could be really nice with a bit of reverb on this kick. Oh, let's do the other reverb because that's the shit one in it. Do this one. That snare does sound pretty good, so let's just make sure the automation is enabled on there. And this reverb is too high. Pretty nice and subtle, I like it. I'm not sure on the snare roll, I think we could maybe just have... I'm gonna turn the snare roll off. I just don't think it's needed. I don't think the reverbs need on the kick either. But that's just this style of track. In yours, it might feel like you would need it. But don't forget that effects are used. You want to use effects so it adds to the vibe, not to the sake of it. And sometimes dryness is the way forward. I said no one ever. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm about. I really like that. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to watch the rest, you can see it inside the Syntho area. If you've got any questions on this video, just pop them below and I'll get in touch. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to see some more industry style stuff, talking head stuff, head over to the Josh Baker music YouTube channel and I've got a lot of content on there as well. Thanks again and I'll catch you very soon.